In this video we're going to take a look at installing Grafana on a 64-bit Linux operating system and in this example I'm using the Raspberry Pi with the Bullseye build which is the latest build. To install Grafana I would recommend putting it in the APT repository because then every time that you do a, um, you know, a get update it will check for the latest version of Grafana. The first thing we need to do is run through um, the install to get the latest release um, and then um, after that we need to add Grafana to, to our repository and then we will run a, a sudo um, uh, update. So let's go through this procedure. You could cut and paste all of these commands in one go. Um, I like to do them one at a time. Now I have got this installed so really I'm not too sure you're going to see the full install but let's go through this anyway so we, the first thing is to 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 get this APT transport it's already installed really as part of the bullseye build so um, it's probably not going to do too much you can see there I've already got the newest version um, this next one is to to set up the software properties. I'm not too sure exactly what it's doing. Again, I'll put these um, commands on my blog page. So, you know, please follow the link in the description below and that will take you to a full how-to blog on my, uh, on my website. So I'll cut and paste this last command, um, which seems to be getting some, some Grafana information um, here and, and putting it in the APT. So this is where we want it to install from. Again, it's already done it. So now we move on to the repositories. So I just wanted to put this screen up. These are my instructions that I'll put on my site. So this is the next command that we're going to use. There are two that we could possibly use, but we I always prefer to use the stable version rather than the beta. Now you can see here we've got this is the string that we're about to cut and paste into our terminal to, to get this um, to to add the repository. This bit we've already done uh, in the previous step. You can see up here. Um, but if you want to um, uh, put the just the Grafana OSS version, then you need to change this command here in the string to to this one I would always remember, recommend going for the stable version rather than the beta we're going to install the enterprise stable version so um, you can see here we're going to go for 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 this install um, and that's all it takes to, to get the repository so we'll cut and paste that that string into my terminal again yeah you know, it's already this is already being done so this is setting up my repository so the, the, the next thing really is to do the update and I only did this yesterday so if you can see it was it was pretty quick um, you can see here my my Grafana packages you would then run the command to install Grafana Enterprise and you can see here it's already installed it's the latest version so it, it, it's it's happy um, and once we've done that there's there's a few things that we have to do to start the the Grafana server um, first thing is to copy this into the, your sudo system control um, daemon reload and you won't get any return from these even when you do it for the first time so as long as it goes back to this prompt here with no error messages it's done it um, we then need to start the Grafana server okay there we go so it's done that um, and you can check the status with with this command so check status what I'm going to do before I do that is just clear the screen so it all goes to the top. So we use a standard clear command and then I'll paste that in again. So it started Microfana service. So 
Um, the last thing to do is to have it so Grafana starts up on, on reboot. To enable the, the auto restart, we just have to enable the, the, the Grafana service um, uh, via the system control. So, so the first time that you, you log in, the um, username and password is going to be admin and admin. So, so there we go. Um, what I'm going to show you um, uh, now is how to, to connect your influx DB data to Grafana. Now this is, I've already done it, but I'm going to go through the process again of, of, of connecting it. So let's have a look at influx DB version 2, I think I've got on here. So we'll, we'll log into this. So it uses um, its own flux uh, commands. And it becomes a little bit tricky to to understand that for the first time. But I'm going to show you some really quick ways of getting data into InfluxDB without having to know how to do how to program Influx. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to add a um, a data source. So I'm going to, go to my data sources. I'm going to go to this one and. Uh, this one is already set up, but I'll take you through the 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 operation. So, give it a name. Um, that's just a text name at the top. Um, I click default. But here, your query language. You can see here, advanced data scripting query language flux, um, and version two dot x or one point eight plus. Okay, so. Um, or influx QL. Now, if you if you're using versions below 1.8 plus, you'll be using this way. So, so we've done a previous video where everything's been put on a Raspberry Pi Zero 32-bit operating system, and that's the way we're communicating. But this one we're using the flux. So let's go through what's different on here. The first thing is the the URL stays the same. So localhost. 8086 basic authentication um, and then that is your username and password that you've used to log in to to influx um, db so we'll tick that and then we come down to this bit now this is different okay so you can see here token i've already put this in but i'll show you how to do it um, but the first thing you need to do is find your organization and I've covered this on another video. If you hide this, you'll be struggling what your organization is. You've already set this up in a previous video. Here we can see IoT simplified. So we're going to put that in for our organization. And then we need to generate the, the, the token. So we need to find the API token. So if I click on here, I, you know, I've got some already. This one I generated for my link to Node Red. And then I've generated a separate one here for for Grafana. So every time you generate a new API token, you get you get a new code. But for for Grafana, we want all access. It's like admin access. So click on that, give it a name. I will delete this after because I've, I've already done it. Okay, test test R. And this is your code. So copy that and put it somewhere safe. So this is your API code. And once you've got that, you can come back to here and paste it into token. Yeah, if I hit reset, I can do that now, but I'm not going to do it. And then the new version of InfluxDB version 1.8 plus and above, it doesn't refer to databases in the same way. A database is referred to as a bucket. Okay. Now I can delete and create buckets on um influx dp quite easily so i'm just going to delete this and confirm if i go now to my data explorer you can see here i've got two buckets one called house home and one called inventory and then i under inventory i've got four measurements and then under each measurement i've got uh, four process values and, and they're all the same for each for each one so i've tried to make it so it's simple but this is my bucket here, inventory. Don't forget, it needs to be case sensitive. So exactly how you've got it typed there. And you would put that into here. Other than that, you don't need to, to do anything. You can just click on save and test. And you will get here, it's found four 
buckets. So it's found my vessel one, vessel two. So it's found all of these under inventory. Okay. Um, so if we now go back to, to Grafana, this is the tricky bit, and I'm going to show you um, an idiot's guide to getting your data in with this new, these new flux commands because um, it was definitely a little bit easier using the standard SQL query builder um, on the older versions um, but when you know this way it's going to it's going to stop you having to learn flux from from scratch so if we go to um, we want to create a dashboard and I've already got one but I'm going to create a new dashboard here and then I'm going to add a panel my data is already being pushed into InfluxDB. It's saved in that database for 30 days and then it starts writing over it. I get to this stage here where I've got to write a query. So I've selected my database. Um, now not, on the old version, you had a query builder here, so you could select things and it was, it was quite easy to, to do. But now you've got to, to put this query in. And you can see here, flux language syntax. I, I don't know how to do that. Hey, watch this you'll be impressed. Build up your query in InfluxDB. So I want vessels 1, 2, 3 and 4 and I want the level. Okay. Now if I submit that I get a trend here in, in, in InfluxDB and if I then click on script editor I get my query. So I can just copy that Control C, go back to Grafana, Control V. I think you have to hit enter, make sure I've got it right at the beginning. So it took a while because I didn't realise here I had the last six hours ticked. Um, I thought I had it at 15 minutes, so I started to panic a minute for, for thinking I wasn't going to do it. But here we have my, my data, so I can apply that now. And let's go to my runtime dashboard because there's some obviously some nice features here on Grafana. Um, I can do the last six hours, and if I do two now, it's going to constantly refresh that data. Um, but I need to tell it to refresh that data. So under here, the auto refresh is off. So if I do every five seconds, this trend is now going to, to refresh. If I put it into uh, uh, my user mode, so this is you know, how I can look at it as a, as a dashboard without the edit features so here I've got my range zero all of my other vessels are at, at zero but if I move my my level radar and aim that somewhere else and wait for five seconds I can see now that my level is just dropping down at the edge of the screen and if I press escape I can actually do let's do the last five minutes I can see that now, um, and then what I like about Grafana is you can you can zoom in, and I don't think it aggregates it. So this is thirty nine. Yes, yeah, so I'm getting the data every second here, which is how quick I'm sending it. Um, Influx DB, I'm not too happy with the way it aggregates the data so I could have it on this 30 minutes and then when I zoom I've still got you know aggregated data aggregated data you know every 10 seconds where Grafana zooms in and I get my data every second so I, I do prefer that um, we'll go through Grafana in, in more detail but I just wanted to show you that because that will be panic stations I've got this new flux query language I have to learn but don't forget, build your query. So if I go back to my query builder, this pretty much looks like an SQL query builder. Be, build up your query and then um, uh, go to script edit editor. So just quickly, we'll do another one. We'll do percent. We'll do script editor. We'll copy that for now. I'll have to put my radar down. Control -C. We'll control C that. Now in here, we are going to add another dashboard, a new panel, and this one we will have, rather than time series, we'll put some nice gauges on there, okay, and I will cut and paste into here again, 
and there we can see 86% now. I can start playing around with my um, alarms down here. So I've got 80, so I could move that to 90 for my higher level alarm. Okay, um, and that's it. So if I apply, and now I have a look at my dashboard, I've got my percentages at the top and I've got my level underneath as a trend. And I'm going to have that auto refresh in every five seconds. Don't forget to click save. Give it a new name. Uh, okay, and there's my there's my dashboard created, and you can share that. Um, but this is you know a, 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 an edge type solution and what we'll start looking at in later videos is how we can push this this data from my edge device to the cloud or maybe sync databases so um, there you have it how to install uh, Grafana on a 64-bit machine and a quick overview of how to link data from influx DB version 2 using flux um, commands into Grafana not as difficult as what it might first appear and you don't have to be a you know a programming expert and learn flux commands. So thanks for listening. I hope that was useful and hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.